which we are going to start in today's uh, class anyone in, is has any question and also at the end of what the class we will be discussing that okay let's first start in a sequence manner okay <laughs> <clears throat> okay so the chapter has been divided into three parts winds storms and cyclones so talking about wind what is wind whenever there is a difference in air pressure whenever there is a difference in air pressure there will be flow of wind from one region to another region so isn't it better to study about air pressure first right so guys you see the air which is around us exerts pressure how do we observe that pressure how do we see that you see a tin can is filled with uh, water uh, a tin can let's say you take a tin ca uh, can fill it with water and heat it over a flame now as soon as the water comes to a boil the lid is put on as soon as the water starts to boil just put the lid of the tin back on it and uh, okay, now sir. let's try to keep it um, at the cool water what will you observe you take the boiled a, water will be like uh, cool down no that is not what will happen that will happen but one more interesting thing is happening to happen here you have got a tin you have play, uh, put some water in it you are heating it okay now later what you did you poured some cold water in it or you just put it in a beaker consisting of cold water so what will you observe here the shape of the tin will change here it becomes distorted like this it will be like this a very simple activity which you guys can do it but note remember you have closed the tin after boiling the tin con uh, containing water you have closed the tin okay so what did we observe from here huh so one thing we observe in here that when cold water is poured over this can some of the steam in the can started to condense see over here this much is water okay this much is let's say up to this mark you have filled water inside this tin okay and once you placed a cap over it once you uh, place the lid over it what happened what happened the air molecules is were trapped here all right now you have yes, poured some cold water in it or simply put it in cold water what happened this air here this air is started to condense now air started to condense so now due to this condensation what happened yes anyone who can tell me what happened Conden in the process of condensation what happens water changes from water vapor to liquid liquid state yeah the water vapor converted to liquid state here so one more important thing here we say that the amount of air inside the can is now reduced earlier you had water vapor in the form of air now it has been converted into liquid so the amount of air inside this can has reduced now getting it what i'm trying to say here look again if it's confusing look again guys you have got this tin put some water in it this is water this is an open tin now the tin is open now i start to boil it i start to boil it and then 
put the lid back on its top. Okay. This much is the level of water in it. And now you have put it in cold water or simply pour in some cold water over it. So okay. we know that when water vapor, when you cool water vapor, it will change its state from gaseous uh, to liquid state. Yes, sir. Yeah. So whatever was the water vapor molecules here, it has started to condense. Getting it now? So understand it like this. Yes, sir. Let's assume that you had how many molecules of water vapor just for the purpose to make you guys understand it. Let's say that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten molecules. These ten molecules were of water vapor. Now, after condensation, what happened? The five molecules converted into water. Now you are left with how many air molecules now? Water vapor molecules now? Please do answer. Five. 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 Five molecules of water vapor. And this water vapor yes, is in sir. which state? We know it is in gaseous state. Yes. Or we can, okay. So what we observe here, that the amount of gas or simply in simple terms, let's say the amount of air inside the can has reduced now getting it now so we will also say that the amount since the amount of air molecules has reduced amount of air has reduced inside the can the air pressure inside this can has also in reduced while the air pressure outside this can is same okay and in comparison to the air pressure inside this can the air pressure surrounding it is more Hence, the can gets compressed like this. Okay, sir. Getting it. The number of uh, the pressure has just been disturbed here. Is it clear to both of you or not? I will be asking question. If it's not clear, please do tell me. I will explain it again. I actually did not understand. Okay. Look here. We are trying to study about air pressure okay and why the activity i was actually trying to conclude that air exerts pressure we don't feel it that operation is being exerted on us but why an activity i will ex i will explain how air exerts pressure you have this can here you have filled it up to this mark with water. Okay. So this much is consisting of air in it. Okay. Now you started to boil it. Okay, so this. You are heating it. So what will happen in this case? A steam will start, start to, to generate boil. now. It will start to boil and you will see water vapors in it. Yeah. Now in the third state, what I have done, I have covered the tin with its lid. All right. I have put back the lid on it. And then what I did, I let's say I poured some cold water in it. Let's say you poured some cold water. After boiling, you poured? Yeah, after boiling and after closing the lid, I have poured in some cold water over this tin. Getting it now. Now, what will happen? No, not like inside it. You put it over it. You put it, I have put it over it when the lid is closed. Okay. So, suppose earlier you had one, two, let's say, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight molecules of air were there. There were eight molecules of air molecules. Eight molecules of air. Now what happened? Condensation is occurring here. Condensation is happening here now since the temperature has been lowered. So what happened? 
out of eight, four air molecules. Air molecules, in a simple term, we are actually referring to the water vapor here. Okay, exchangeably, you are exchangeably, we are using the same term here. Either you call it water vapor or air molecules in this case here. Okay, so in this, so what happened? Four of the water molecules were condensed and mixed into the water here. So you are left with only four air particles now. Four molecules of air you are left with only. Right. And you guys know that if you were to have a container, any container like this, Okay, the molecules of the air will exert pressure on the walls of the container. Like you have a cylinder at your home. Okay, if you were to, uh, if someone opens it, the air comes out of it with great pressure. The fuel comes out of it with great pressure. Why? Yes, the sir. molecules of the fuel was continuously exerting pressure on the boundary of the cylinder. Okay, right. So, so with with great force it comes out. So what if I were to empty it? I were to empty it, and let's say only a um, few millimeter, a uh, few milliliters of LPG is left in it. Okay, so it will not come with that much of great pressure. Getting it. Same is the case with hair. I have reduced the eight molecules of air. To four molecules only here by the process of condensation here. So will it be exerting more pressure, or the will, or will the pressure will be uh, decreased in this case? Decreased. It will be decreased, obviously. Yes. So you sir. see, the surrounding pressure is more now. Okay, as compared to the inside pressure, surrounding pressure is more. That is why the that is the reason why. The tin is distorted or basically crushed here. Right? Okay. That is the reason here. Now you might uh, ask this question why this cylinder does not get distorted? Because it is made up of a very strong material that can resist the outside pressure. All right. Apart from that, also, you will observe that. An empty cylinder, uh, there's a tiny bit of space here from which air can be released to regulate the pressure. So in this activity, we basically concluded that air can exert pressure. Is this clear? Yes. Yes, sir. So, so air has got pressure. Good. the pressure generated by air molecules right okay that is the activity which was which i was referring to here you have uh, um, boiled the water after pouring cold water in it how the shape changes look at over here right now so the reason here is air pressure is unbalanced so what happened the pressure outside is more surrounding pressure is more than the inside pressure getting it now okay so now the question comes here why we humans are, are not getting crushed by the atmospheric pressure? The because it's balanced. Because it is balanced. Very good. There is so many metabolic activities going inside our body also. Like circulation of blood. Okay. Heart, yes. is, heart is continuously throbbing and it is pumping the blood. It is also generating pressure. Blood is flowing into, ner into the nerve. So many uh, metabolic activities are going there. Digestion movement of food okay yes, so all that generates pressure inside the human body also right so human body also generates pressure while the atmosphere also exerts the pressure okay 
so two things happen the pressure is balanced okay and pressure is not acting at any one point on the human body it is distributed getting it now okay now while if the person were to climb the mount everest we discussed earlier also there what happens the air is thin hence the pressure generated inside the human body is more okay so the person suffers through nausea or um blood comes out of the nose getting it so that is the concept of air pressure here hope that is correct i uh, hope that is clear to both of you yes getting it sir. okay now talking about wind as we were talking about wind we know that the natural motion of air due to current in a particular direction is called as wind wind when the air moves in a flow uh, in a particular direction is called wind the reason why it moves because of air currents it is caused due to air currents you guys are already aware of the concept of land breeze and sea breeze land and sea breeze yes sir right so you guys know that on the land surface you have this land surface let's say here and you have got a water body here okay so obviously you see the air molecules above the land heats up more faster okay while the air molecules above the water heats very slowly and cools down also very slowly getting it while the air molecules and the land itself uh, um, warms up very quickly and cools down very quickly so that is why what happens the air molecules from the water bodies rushes towards the land surface to take up the space created by the lighter molecules of air that rises up so the lighter molecules of air are rising up so air so there is a gap being created here and that gap is being occupied by the air molecules that is coming from the water side so here what is happening a low pressure is created due to the uh, rising up of the air molecules to, from the land side a low pressure is being created here and since here the air molecules are not rising up it's not rising up it remains there and it moves towards this side so there is more amount of what uh, more amount of air molecules towards the water side so there is a high pressure here suppose you have this much of air and this much of air here let's say there are this much of air molecules and there are only this much of air molecules in which of the situation there is more pressure generated in a or b in the first one obviously so if there are more air molecules it means high pressure if there is lesser air molecules it means low pressure so the movement of the air molecules is from higher pressure towards the lower pressure region getting it so this movement of air molecules generates current okay remember the convection current in the chapter heat we talked about convection yes, current yes sir right so you had a beaker in which the water was boiling so what was happening basically the water molecules were being heated up so they were rising up and again when they Then, came to the top they became cooled down yeah yeah and they again fall back to the bottom again cool down so a convection current was happening here no so the same thing happens in this case also getting it now so it generates yes. it it was generating a convection current here also there is a movement like this the air molecules from water moves towards the land and again from uh, uh here it rises upward okay and again the air molecules will come towards this side if it falls as rainfall or if it cools down then a continuous cycle is basically happening here so that we call as currents generation of air currents right so it is due to this current how winds uh, uh happen how winds occur 
got the concept okay if also current are caused by sorry winds are caused by current winds are caused by air currents and why air currents are caused due to the pressure difference right now and air will move from okay. high pressure area to low pressure area okay right so let's talk about winds and pressure difference now pressure difference so if the wind is p uh, uh, if the wind speed is increased so what will happen the air pressure is reduced if the wind speed is increased the air pressure is decreased you see air moves from a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure two things i said here first thing is that increased wind speed is accompanied by reduced air pressure and the another thing is that air moves from where to where higher molecules to the lower molecules higher pressure yeah higher high. pressure okay higher pressure why because of higher concentration of air molecules okay yes sir lower pressure region getting it okay now let's talk about what are the warm air and cool air hmm? warm air and cool air what are the two, two things here huh <laughs> on heating you know you guys know air expands and rises up and since it expands it takes up more space and therefore becomes lighter yes sir right and warm air is slightly uh, it is lighter than the cooler air that is why you see smoke always rises up the smoke always rises up because it is lighter and what about the cold air is it heavier or lighter it is heavier it is heavier heavier do you know what is the reason of uh, uh, um, cold air being heavier what sir what can is you repeat it again of, yeah what is the reason of cold air being heavier because it does not expand it does not expand okay what else the reason why they are heavier in nature why they are heavier because like there is less molecules hmm <coughs> because no. there is less molecules because there is lesser molecules think think uh, on this uh, topic for a minute as i said on heating the concept is of heat on heating air molecules start to rise up okay and since it expands it takes up more space here you are heating let's say this is any source of heat okay these are the air molecules so on heating it starts to rise up and expand rise and expand so if it is expanding it will take up more space now it was earlier restricted to this much area only now it will start to rise up and take up this much of area let's say getting it this much of area so it takes up more space and therefore becomes lighter here that is the thing but while in the case of cold air is there any source of heat i am not heating it that is why the air is cold no yeah i am not heating it no source of source yes, of sir. heat is there 
the air molecules are there so if i am not heating it it will not start to rise up it will still remain there okay so all this air molecules will be um, in the same place and they together will be heavier that is the reason because they are not being heated no heat so then they will not rise up they are uh, they will not start to expand they will be considered concentrated in the same region and will generate more pressure also okay okay sir okay yes, so sir. just explain to me the concept of wind currents <laughs> can you repeat the question explain what is wind current what is wind current like we were talking about it moments ago it is similar to the convection current but in the case of convection current there was vertical movement in a kettle if you were to boil something you are boiling some so uh, boiling water so what happened in that case the molecules yeah. of the water were moving upward and then downward a vertical movement was there in the case of convection current in liquids okay so, yeah uh, when current is actually just like the flow of amount mm. of air it is like a high pressure to low pressure mm. exactly but one more thing you can add it here that wind current is a current of air bit my which might have some uh, amount of force in it in it also it will have some amount of force in it also that will move horizontally from a region of higher pressure to lower pressure so you have this let's say land surface and this is water body here okay, this is water so body and this is land here so from higher pressure to lower pressure the movement of air molecules is taking place in vertical direction now in this direction it is not rising up it is moving towards the land hence you add in the definition it is the uh, horizontal movement of air molecules from a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure and that continuous movement uh, of air molecules generate a current called as wind current so that is clear okay so we may also yeah. say that wind currents can be generated due to uneven heating of land and water also that is the concept so of land wind current one more time yeah sure here you had example of this land surface and this water body and you already know the pressure above the water body is more yes sir and the pressure on the um, above the land surface is lesser because the air molecules are rising up there so there is yes, a horizontal sir. movement of air molecules horizontal this is horizontal this is vertical right so there is a horizontal movement yes, of sir. water molecules from higher pressure to lower pressure okay so that okay, generates sir. a current that is called as wind current and in the case okay, of convection sir. current in liquids there was vertical movement of water molecules were rising up and then coming back like that so that is okay, the difference sir. while defining it uh, uh, remember the point of vertical and horizontal okay sundosh and vaiga now uh, yes. we yes, know sir. wind currents can be developed due to uneven heating of land and water right now what happens in winter during summer we understand it what happens in winter the direction of wind flow is reversed during winters the direction of the wind flow is reversed and it moves from land towards the ocean like in summer what is happening the flow of wind is from ocean towards the land. land yeah while in the winter it is just reverse from land towards the ocean yes sir the reason being is that water is being heated up more than the uh, land surface during winters okay Land receives less sunlight. Shall we move ahead then? 
with having been discussed the basic concepts so oh. okay all right the flow of air when the speed of the wind increases it lowers down the air pressure that is a interesting phenomena here hmm? one thing we know wind is due to air pressure okay what if the speed of wind is more what will the effect of the speed will uh, of the wind will be on air pressure it will reduce the air pressure remember that thing okay right now now the speed of air or wind it will depend upon what as moments ago we talked about the same thing depend upon the difference of the pressure of two regions right okay so what if the difference between the pressure increases huh say this is region 1 this is region 2 okay, okay let's sir. assume that the pressure here was 5 pascal a 5 atmosphere atmospheric pressure here was 5 atmosphere and here it was 2 atmosphere air will obviously move from this region to this region with a certain speed let's say x speed all right guys now if i were to yes, increase sir. the pressure to 10 atmospheric pressure 10 atm atm is the unit of pressure okay atmospheric pressure now here i have increased the pressure to let's say um for let's say it let's assume it to be 20 atmosphere all right and let's say here i have raised it to 4 atmosphere now the pressure difference is 16 atmosphere earlier the pressure difference was of only 3 atmosphere now the speed will also be increased now the wind speed will be increased getting it sundus and vaiga so we say that if yes, the sir. pressure difference between the if the difference between the pressure increases the speed of the air will also increase are the three points clear here the first point is that if there is more wind speed it will reduce the air pressure all right i like, didn't understand the second point second point yes okay second point was saying uh, basically what air uh, uh, flows from a region of high pressure to low pressure i hope that is clear sorry, already sorry. Third, third point third, third point. point yeah third point here what happened suppose you had two regions region 1 region 2 here okay i say that atm here is actually a unit of atmospheric pressure okay so suppose region 1 earlier had 5 atmosphere of pressure and second region has 2 atm pressure to atmospheric of, uh, pressure okay so the difference here was of 3 atm right now suppose due to some region the pressure in this region increased to 20 and the pressure in the second region increased to 4 atm from 2 atm it increased to to 4 atm now the pressure difference is 16 atm between the two region earlier it was 3 atm so this will also have a impact on the speed of the wind so the speed of the wind will increase is it clear now yes sir yes sir that is clear good let's move ahead then hot air and cold air i already told you about the concept right and why what is the reason why the smoke moves in upward direction because the fog is high it is it is because it is hot it is main reason is it is lighter in weight it is hot so it will start to rise up when it is hot its density reduces it becomes light in weight getting it now yes so sir it starts to rise up okay so you have air molecules here you heat them up they will start to rise up they will start to expand in more areas earlier it was up to this area only now it will expand 
spread to a large area in the room right so it has expanded now okay as you heat it up it starts to rise and expand and ex it occupies more space okay so earlier you had the air in this much of area only so suppose it weight let's say ki let's say that it weight x uh, kilogram let's say now the air has spread to this much of area air molecules has spread to this much of area so what happens here the overall weight is uh, is being put on a larger area so if you were to take this much of area the same area as we taken here so it will be more no less than x kilogram look what i just said here let's say in this much of region you have x kilogram of weight being applied by air getting it now what happened i have heated this air now it is started to expand in more part of the room earlier it was up to this much area only i have i have okay. constricted it to this much area only now it is started to expand so there are lesser molecules of air in this much area now since it has expanded so if you were to uh, calculate the weight of the air molecules in this much portion of air it will be less than x kilogram now why because the air molecules has expanded so that is the thing here that is uh, the thing here that it becomes lighter now it is not that the weight of a air molecule reduces no the weight applied in a given area by the air molecules it actually reduces why because the air molecules has spread is it clear okay why go yes, please sir. please explain to me what you just understood what sir just explain to me what you understood from this or oh, sundu would you like to try it is uh, yes. simple yeah because it, i understand like uh, if if the like the smoke is lighter then it will be like go in upward direction guys both of you need to keep your cameras on in the class okay from next class keep your cameras on in the class okay yes on this continue yeah so So that like the smoke is lighter, the like the heat is lighter. Then like the smoke will go in upward direction, and it spreads to a much larger area. Yeah. Okay. So suppose you had earlier smoke in this expanded. much of area. Yeah, it gets expanded now. It is same as like this. For example, you have now four balls. Four. balls in a box okay now you put each box in separate boxes each balls in separate boxes so will the density or simply the weight of the uh, weight will not be distributed it is distributed into four box now so the weight of the each box is reduced here now earlier one box was carrying the weight of four box now only uh, one box is carrying the weight of only one bo uh, one ball only same thing is happening here you have heated the air molecules it expanded the air molecules let's say get divided into separate boxes in here right now so the weight yes, that sir. is being experienced by each box here is lesser here that is why we say that oh. air becomes okay, lighter sir. in weight okay sir clear sundus and why go good now let's move ahead then how convection in air occurs we already have discussed that please do give this uh, paragraph a read anyone read this <laughs> what sir read this paragraph how convection in air occurs when the hot air in a region rises up 
the pressure becomes low in that region. As, mm. as a result, the colder air fills its place. Mm. This is how convection in air occurs. Mm. This is how convection in air occurs. Very good. Right now. Okay. So as you can see over here. Right. So wind is being warmed up. Okay. Lesser dense warm air rises. Now it cools down. Okay. Again, falls back to the ground. Right. So that is how a current is generated here. Now talking about this thing, we have already talked about this. Interesting part is that you have to talk about the uh, uneven uh, the wind current that is generated due to the uneven heating between the equator and the poles. So if you were to look at the earth, which part of the earth is getting more heat? Is it the region equatorial region or is it the polar regions? Equatorial region. So in the equator region? it is hot, right? Exactly. Right now. Because sun directly falls to it. Right, exactly. Because the rays of the suns are falling directly, falling vertically in the equatorial region. Right. While slant rays of sunlight, S L A N T, slant rays of sunlight reaches the pole. Getting it? Yes, that sir, is the region. There is uneven heating between the equator and the <coughs> polar regions, right? So that will also lead to generation of it. So the regions which are pro in proximity of the equator receives the highest amount of heat from the sun. So what happens? Warm airs in this region are rising up. Okay, so the air from the latitudes of zero to thirty degree moves in from north and south to take its place. So latitude equator, it is at zero degree. <laughs> Just let me charge my pen. It's not working. So you see from equator that is at zero degree, uh, zero degree latitude. Yes, if you were to ride up to 30 degree latitude. Okay. So air from zero to 30 degree latitude reaches the north and the south pole. <clears throat> Getting it now, right? Similarly, the air at the pole is much cooler than the air that is around the equatorial region. Getting it now. <laughs> so, so what is up? what? Air at the poles is much more cooler than the air uh, uh, that is around the equatorial region. It is much more colder. Yes, sir. So look at this diagram clearly um, in a better manner. So let's say it is at zero degree latitude. We know that. And this is 30 degree latitude. Okay. It will be slightly above. Let's say this is 30 degree of latitude. Getting it now. So as I say that the air from latitudes zero to 30 degree, it will move in from north and south to take its place. <clears throat> yes. So from 30 degree to here and from 30 degree to here, it will start to move in the north direction. Right now. And this air will move in the south pole direction, right? South direction. Yes, okay. sir. <clears throat> now, if you were to look at the air in the polar region, they are comparatively more cooler right now. So the warm air from the equatorial okay. region rises up while the cool air from the polar re receives these um, races inside to occupy its place. So here, for example, you have region like Russia. Russia are in this region now. Let's say this is Russia. Here you have regions like Europe. Yeah. Here you have example of you have got North America. Now this region here is North America. Let's say this is the region of Europe connected with Russia. This is Russia here. That is the region. You see what happens here. Cold winds rushes from the pole 
towards the equatorial region. So the red lines which I'm using here, it is the cold winds coming from the pole towards the equatorial region right now. And the cold winds from the South Pole will also move towards the equatorial region. Getting it guys. Okay. So you see so subsequently here what is happening? The wind from the polar region is moving towards the um, equatorial region. Why is it so? Because of the uneven heating of the Earth's surface. So in the yes. equatorial region, air is uh, warming up. It will become. Uh, it will start to rise up, right? Yes, sir. So a gap will be created here. Now a vacuum will be created here. So in order to yes, take sir. the place of the, that vacuum. The air from the polar region moves towards the equatorial region. That's why, for example, in Russia, you have got Siberian winds. Yeah, Siberian winds also comes towards the uh, northern uh, towards India also, but it is blocked by the northern Himalayas, right? So suppose if there was no northern uh, no Himalayas, so India, especially the north part of India, will remain cold for most part of. Uh, the month okay for most part of the year yeah it sir. might remain cold getting it huh? but it is due to the yes, northern himalayas that the winds are blocked so that is clear okay now let's move ahead then yes why this diagram you can have a more better look the wind flow pattern because of uneven heating on the earth now you will observe in this thing now <coughs> that the rotation of earth has also a role to play in the wind pattern generated. How is it so? We will discuss that as well. Look here. In this diagram, you will observe that the direction of the wind is not exactly from north to south or from south to north. As we were discussing in the earlier diagram, we were seeing exact motion of winds now. As per the principle, of uneven heating of the land. Why uneven heating of land? Because sun is not falling equally at every region. We were seeing that wind pattern should be like this. Yeah, the movement of wind should be from the poles towards the equatorial region. Getting it what I'm trying to say here? Yes. But in this diagram, what do we observe here? Hmm? That like the winds are not going exactly like hmm. to the colder parts like the Yeah. So it's here you see wind. here you see the direction of the wind is not exactly from north to south or from south to north. Like here, these winds from the polar region are actually going from where to where? From the north towards the south now? To south. Yes. Towards, it is actually going towards the south. And from the pole, they are going from the south pole towards the northern direction now? Yes. They're all going towards the northern direction. But it is actually not true. As, as per the principle, this is what should be happening, but it is not true. Why? Because the diversion of wind is created because of the Earth's rotation. So Earth is not stationary. It is continuously rotating. That is the reason the winds does not um, moves according to the principle. Yes, so it, it is rotating on its axis. <laughs> exactly. Right. Okay. So, so similarly... Uh, so, cold winds from north and south pole moves towards the equator and the neighboring latitude and the circulation of winds takes place on the earth. Right now. So, this is not 100% according to the work, working principle. Why? Because of um, rotation of the earth. Although, to some extent, we observe that. That it is coming from the north towards the south direction and from south towards the north direction. As you can see in the diagram itself. Up to some extent, it is true. Like the winds are coming from here to here. Yeah, these winds are coming. And these winds are coming from south to north direction. Getting it now? The winds are moving towards where? Yes, towards the equatorial region and towards the equatorial region here as well. Right? 
Now let's yes, talk sir. about uneven heating of land and water caused causes monsoon winds on earth which bring rainfall. So due to uneven heating also rainfall can be observed. Yes, anyone who would like to explain it? So what is the question? <laughs> this is the topic. Try to explain it from your understanding so far. <laughs> like you already know that land heats up more in summer. Hmm. So uneven heating of land and water bodies causes monsoon in summer season, which brings ultimately brings um, a monsoon that is rainfall here. So in summer season, what happens? The land near the equator gets warmer and its temperature generally remains higher than the ocean. So in the equatorial region, right, countries like here, India, Saudi, Africa, the northern part of Africa, getting it now. So these countries basically they receive monsoon rainfall here. Why? It is in the onset of the summer season because what happens? The water bodies and the land surface here they have got a temperature difference in them. Getting it now? It is yes, just sir, the concept of land present CPs. Getting it now? Yeah. Yes, sir. So what is simply happening? <laughs> the land from the uh, the air from the land side rises above, and the gap created due to the rising air it is being taken up by the cold air coming from the ocean side, isn't it, Sandus? Okay, so that leads yes. to generation of monsoon winds now, and monsoon winds are coming from where? They are coming from ocean towards okay. the land surface. And since the wind are coming from ocean, they are moisture laden. They are loaded with moisture. Right now. So whatever moisture it brings towards the land, when it comes to the land surface, it starts to rise up. And when it rises up in the upper layer of the air, the temperature is normally lower. So what will happen? The process of condensation happens there. That is That leads to rainfall. And that rainfall is called as monsoon rainfall also. Why? Because it is uh, triggered by the monsoon winds. Right now? Yes, it is sir. clear, I hope. Right now. So since these winds come from the ocean, they carry water with them. In the similar manner, the winds in the winter season move from the land towards the ocean. In the winter season, just opposite happens. Now have a look at the direction of monsoon winds in India. Okay, can you guys guess where these monsoon winds are coming from? Are they coming from Indian Ocean? Are they coming from Bay of Bengal? Are they coming from Arabian Sea or Pacific Ocean, Atlantic Ocean? Where are they coming from? I think Arabian. Arabian Ocean, exactly. Yes, sir. So, so here, this is a. Bay of Bengal. Yeah, that. this is. Yes, on those. No, I was saying like it could be Arabian Sea because the Bay of Bengal is like in other side. Exactly. This is where the Bay of Bengal is. And here it is Indian Ocean. So the winds are coming from the Bengal, uh, Arabian, Arab sea. Arabian Sea here, right? And look at the pattern here. It comes in this side, in this direction. Okay. And then it starts to move towards the northern plains of India. Getting it now. Now do tell me why all the wind, uh, why the wind is moving towards the northern India, because in the Himalayas, what do you observe here? Yes. If you were to see here, this is where the yes. Himalayas lie now. Yes, sir. Okay, and the air, air, uh, air uh, direction has just deviated from this direction. It, now it is moving towards this direction. If it will look over here, let me point it. The air molecules, uh, sorry, the winds have come from the Arabian Sea in this direction and now it is moving towards the where? 
north western side no towards the west western states now why because in this belt you have got what himalayas yeah so since it's a colder region it's a colder region what happens there is more pressure there now but we yes. already know that air is already coming from a region of high pressure to a region of lower pressure so yes, the sir. rainfall will be in the lower pressure region only can you get not in uh, not in himalayas all right okay okay sir so that is it that is uh, uh, so here we will be stopping and we will be continuing from next class getting okay, it so sir. the first concept that is wind how it is caused we have discussed that so in the next class we will be discussing that and prepare whatever we have discussed in today's class uh, revise them okay, okay. sir so okay. one question i would like to pose before we end the class you tell me wind currents are generated due to what is it due to uneven heating on the earth is it due to even heating on the earth is it due to cooling on the earth is it due to rotation of the earth what is it due to sir can you repeat the question one more time the question is wind currents are generated due to what reason is it due to uneven heating of the earth is it due to rotation of the earth it is 